There are two documents that I literally do not think I could teach math without. I know I talk a lot about building students' understanding and kind of moving them along that learning journey. And it sounds wonderful, but it's really hard if you don't have a system to keep track of your students' understanding. We know that they come to us in all different places, and even if they did all come to us in the same exact place with the same level of understanding, they wouldn't necessarily progress at that same rate. And so we've got to make sure that we have a way to keep track of where our students are at. And that's hard if we have 30 students or 60 or 90, depending on if you have multiple blocks. And so these two documents allowed me to do just that. I knew where my students were at in their understanding with any specific concept, all of the time. So I'm gonna walk you through these two documents real quick. So the first document was just this one pager that I kept on a clipboard and it was like my best friend. It circulated the room with me wherever I went. And so what this document looked like is it had student's name on the left-hand side. And then at the top, there was a place for like a check, check plus, check minus, based on where I felt students were at in their understanding of the concept we were working on for that day. And then there was also a notes column. And so as I was circulating the room, as I was popping in and out of small groups, Groups, as I was meeting with students, you know, one on one briefly, or as we were doing like a whole group discussion, all of that was kind of like observational data that I collected on this sheet. And so it could be something as simple as a student saying something in a discussion. And I'm like, oh, they've got this. This is just the strategy that they're using. And so I might put like a check plus by their name and just quickly write out the strategy that they're using. Sometimes that notes column was blank. Like it doesn't have to be filled out for every single student, but if there was something that was like really valuable, I was like, oh, I wanna keep note of this because I'll need this later on. So I kept that document with me and I didn't necessarily change out that document every single day. It may have been like every two days or every three days, um, but for the period of time that we were working on that concept, I had this notes document. Now here's why I love this document. First off, it kept me accountable for checking in on every single child. When you have so many students in your class, it can be kind of hard to make sure that you touch base with every child. And so this document held me accountable for at least checking in on every single child in a class period or within every two class periods when it comes to their understanding. Of course, we're doing all kinds of checking in in other ways and just having you know casual conversation and joking and all of that. But I wanted to be sure that I really knew where students were at with every concept that we taught. The second reason I love this document is because it was really helpful when it was time for me to pull groups. So, and not in any type of like formal way or math centers or anything like that. If I needed to just really quickly while students were, you know, working on a warm up or something like that, if I needed to just pull a few students to clear up a misconception or to push them a little bit further in their understanding, I could do that because I had those notes to see, oh, this person and this person, they'd be great in a group together. I need to pull them really quick just to clear something up or maybe to extend their understanding before we went back into like a whole group problem-based task for that day. Another reason that I really like this document is because it allowed me to document their understanding. And so when I was wanting to call on different people, maybe they weren't necessarily volunteering but they had a really great strategy that I was wanting to highlight. I had that written down on my document. And so it is so easy when we are seeing students work to be like, oh, okay, I need to remember to share that out. Or this one would be really good to share out after this one. But then you have a discussion with a student and you completely forget which student's work you wanted to highlight. And so this document just helped me keep track of that as well. So I have this document that I use on a day-to-day -day basis with students, but then I have a second document. And this is kind of like my master document. And all of the information that I I have here, I could use and have used in the past to transfer to this other document. There's kind of two ways you can do this. So you have this like kind of observational data, and then you have the second document, which is a master document. This master document has every single student's name on the left, and then all of the standards on the right. And so I love to keep track and see which students have mastered which standards. I'm gonna tell you why this comes in such handy in just a sec, but what I did with this document is I would you know, at the time I did everything by hand. I wasn't into the whole like digital stuff yet. I would color in that standard, you know, they're red, yellow, or green based on their level of understanding. 
And so if they were green, that means they've got it, they've mastered it, they're good to go. And so I could take that observational data and I could put it in this document. So as I see in the classroom that they have demonstrated that they've mastered that concept, then I can go ahead and mark that green on my master standards document. Another option with this master's document is to actually have some type of resource that you use and you use that same resource to test for every single standard. So it could be a digital program that your school purchased for you. At the time I was using 10 marks and loved it, but it could also be a printable resource or even just end of unit assessments. If you decide to go with more of a formal route rather than an informal route, so you're going with assessments rather than the observational notes um, in order to complete this master document, I actually just released a quick checks resource that would be perfect for this. So there are two quick checks for every single standard. And what that quick check is, is it's three to four questions. And these questions are a mix of conceptual, procedural, and application, which really allows you to see where students are at and really their depth of understanding for that standard. So this would actually be perfect for you to use for this master document. Now, let me tell you why I love this master document. First, when it comes to review. So maybe you're setting up review stations or maybe you have a parent who's asking like, hey, can you send home a review packet? I really wanna help my child or um, however you have your classroom set up. Typically we have like a period of time where we want students working on previously learned concepts or concepts that they still need to work on. And we know that not every child necessarily needs to review the same things or maybe they are not struggling with the same things. And so this master document makes it so easy to be able to say, okay, these 10 kids need to work on these concepts and these seven kids need to work on these concepts. And if you have some type of digital resource that you're using, you may have the ability to actually assign specific standards to specific kids. When I was using 10 marks, I did have that ability. And so this was great. I literally would look at my master document and say, okay, you know, student A, B, and C are struggling with these three standards. So let me assign these three standards to them. And then student you know, D, E, F, they're struggling with these standards, let me assign these standards to them. And so anytime we had any type of independent work time, they were working on concepts that they specifically needed to work on. So whatever that looks like for you, that's one option for how you can use it. Another reason that I like this document is that it made parent-teacher conferences a breeze. When a parent came in, we could sit down, I could tell them exactly what concepts their child had mastered and which concepts they were still working on. And so there wasn't really any negotiation or frustration about the grade because I could show them right there where their student was at in their understanding. And so that was really powerful, both for me and the parents to be on the same page and see exactly where their child was at in their understanding of grade level concepts. If you want an editable version of these two documents, I want you to go over to Instagram and find me. I'm just mixing math and send me a DM that says data tracker. And I will respond with the links to the two Google Drive documents that you can use to fill in your standards and your student names and get to using these two documents to keep track of students understanding in your class.